Hey guys, it's Abdul, you know, your favorite weekday host, weekend host here at 93WBC, of course. Lately, it's been more like weekday host. I was filling in uh, today, 4 o'clock, for Jason Hammer, who is off this week, uh, filling in with Nigel at 4 o'clock uh, this afternoon. Normally, we do these on Fridays, uh, but with the primary and legal work, we figured it'd probably be just a little bit easier and better to do it uh, today, midweek, just to, have to keep you guys an idea of what to pay attention to as we go forward. Obviously, the big news of this week was the primary or the primary debate on Monday night. And I was really shocked and surprised when both Luke Messer, uh, Mike Braun, and Todd Rikita uh, didn't seem to me to really take advantage of the undecided voters um, as I thought they could have. Because uh, believe it or not, a lot of people were waiting to see and watching to hear what the candidates had to say and how do they distinguish themselves you know, from each other. I mean, like I said, it was pretty clear. They all support Donald Trump, in, in case you didn't know. Um, they all want to build the wall. You know, they all you know, support the Second Amendment, arming teachers, you know, all you know, very pro-life. So it's, it's been really hard to find the daylight uh, between these guys. And like I said, I've known, known them all for quite a while, well, some a little bit more uh, than others. And it's really hard for a lot of people to figure out, okay, why should I vote for it? Because to be honest with you, I really don't think you know, absent they support Donald Trump, that any one, you know, of these three has really gone into the detail. Uh, like I said, no offense to their campaign managers. Most of them are friends of mine, except for uh, a couple who are from out of town. Uh, it really doesn't seem like anyone really distinguished themselves. And remember, in the Republican universe, there are about 53% of Republican primary voters in 2016 voted for Donald Trump, which means 47% did not. And like I said, what I found surprising is that the candidates really didn't speak uh, to that 47%. So it'll be interesting to see what their final play is uh, going forward. What I have been, what I have been privy to, and by the way, thanks, Chris Presley. I see your comment right there. I haven't felt anyone has pulled ahead in this race. Uh, I've actually had some access uh, to some internal uh, polling data uh, from a couple of the campaigns, as well as a little bit of some external. And when you factor in all the undecideds is what some of the polling I had a chance to take a look at. And I published it in a little publication I do called The Cheat Sheet, which by the way, um, no one has called me or emailed me or texted me to tell me that my information is wrong. Uh, that if you factor in all the undecideds, it's about Braun 46-ish, I think 42 to 46. Uh, Master comes in second place in the mid thirties and Todd Rakita is in the low twenties. That's if you factor in all of uh, the undecided voters. Like I said, that's just from some of the campaign internal polling. Now, I don't think that's necessarily out of the question uh, because just about every poll that I've been privy to, uh, Mike Braun has been in the lead uh, with both Luke Messer and Todd Rakita kind of battling back and forth for second uh, and third place. Most recently ones I saw had Messer second and Rakita third. Like I said, but you know, once again, that could change. So like I said, it's an, it's an interesting place. I think right now what's really gonna matter is ground game. I really do, how well you know, do candidates identify their voters? How well do they get their people you know, out to the polls? And during the debate, Todd Rakita made a comment that I don't think was entirely factually accurate uh, when he said he had a 10 point lead in early voting. Well, Mr. Rakita is from the fourth district, which has Lafayette, West Lafayette, Tippecanoe County. They have voting centers, and so they had quite a bit of turnout. So I'm assuming Mr. Rakita is just basically thinking that all those voters vote for him. So that might be just a little bit of a stretch uh, of the facts and what the reality actually is. Uh, this is, by the way, still a total complete toss-up, complete jump ball. And I really do think um, that anything can happen. Uh, a couple of things real quickly. Uh, over in the 6th Congressional District, I think uh, Greg Pence has still uh, got a healthy lead. It'll be interesting to see how much Jonathan Lamb uh, can pick up for you, so that anti-Pence uh, vote uh, that might be out there over in the 4th Congressional District. That is just, you know, total, complete jump ball. Uh, and it's actually had some campaign mailers that have been pretty interesting. The most recent one that I saw, and I'm not making this up, it is called Lego My Diego. I'll say that again. Lego My Diego. It is Diego Morales, who is uh, running in the 4th District, and it's got a picture of his face superimposed on an ego waffle, saying that he waffles all the time on issues. I, I'm not making this up. I, I just tell you what's out there and you kind of make up your own minds. Uh, here in Marion County proper, um, keep an eye on a couple different races. The race for Marion County Sheriff, 
on both the Democrat and Republican side. That's uh, what shouldn't be total jump ball. Looks like both the slated candidates, Brian Durham on the Republican side, Kerry Forsall uh, on the Democratic side are having really healthy challenges uh, from Jim Grimes, who's a Republican, and from a gentleman by the name of Bill Benjamin, who's a Democrat. And also, this comes sound really weird, there is a township trustees race, Pike Township, which is the northwest corner of Marion County, a very heated primary contest in that, um, so much so that the challenger to Lula Patton, a young lady by the name of Annette Johnson, just put up her second billboard in Pike Township. Now that ought to tell you something when the Pike Township trustee's race has two billboards, a challenger, the non-slated candidate, that'll tell you that something weird uh, and interesting is going on. So like I said, so lots of stuff uh, that is out there. You've got contested judges and sheriff races uh, up in the HC. Uh, you've got a small claims court race down in Perry Township that's just getting out of control and, and, and off the hook. I always say politics is kind of like academia. Some of the biggest fights over paper clips and post-it notes, believe you me. Uh, but that's what I'm looking at uh, this week. I may do one over the weekend, uh, another little Facebook Live, just to keep you guys up to speed uh, with what's going on. So like I said, just kind of keep it uh, in tune. If we don't do anything on Saturday, we'll definitely do it, do one on Monday uh, before uh, before the primary day. Uh, this weekend on the weekend edition of Duel at Large, uh, we'll be talking actually to our libertarian friends. You will not see them on the ballot on Tuesday because libertarians do not do primaries. They do conventions. They believe that you should actually pay for your own convention and not have the taxpayers foot the bill. Imagine that. Uh, and also we'll talk to a good friend of mine. His name is Dave Banger. Dave is a columnist uh, for the Lafayette Journal and Courier up in uh, Lafayette, Tempe, Canoe County. So I want to get some perspective uh, of what Indiana's political landscape looks like from someone outside of the 465 area, uh, of the 465 bubble. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll join us this weekend, Saturday at 1 o'clock here on 93 WIBC, uh, the weekend edition of Abdul at Large. Thank you very much, my friends, uh, for sticking around and being with us. And we'll be back on the air at 4 o'clock, filling in for Jason Hammer with Hammer and Nigel here on 93 WIBC.